this Friday, we could see massive moves in the price of silver and the price of gold. We've got a big news story that's going to break Friday morning. And if it goes anything like it has in the past, it's not going to be a good thing for the silver price and gold price. Look, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just trying to prepare you. Because 12 of the last 13 times this ha has happened, it generally has not spelled good news for the price of gold and silver. But do we still have reason to be optimistic? We're going to talk about that in this video. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'll put out a new piece of content every day, something specific to silver and gold, something that relates to, yeah, that subject that you are interested in. And if you can give this video a thumbs up, that will help as well. We want to get the word out to more and more people. And of course, I want to express my gratitude for any and all super chats I've been given in the past. Now, Let's talk about the big news on Friday. And we've got other big news to talk about as well. As a matter of fact, first, let's talk about today. Market moving news will be when the Federal Reserve releases their minutes from their last meeting. Guys, we have been fighting a headwind with the gold price and silver price. Do you feel it? Do you, I mean, do you understand that? Or have you comprehended that? The silver price and gold price really for the last two years. We've had a couple false starts, but the reality is from a monetary policy perspective, from what the Federal Reserve is doing, we've been fighting a headwind. We've been swimming against the current. We've been, you know, trying to grow crops in the dead of winter in January. It's been very, very difficult, but the price of gold and price of silver have fought, fought, fought. And we've been there fighting with them as well. We know the long-term story, the big picture, the thesis behind the silver price and gold price. So today, when the Fed releases their minutes, we're probably going to hear a bunch of hawkishness like, oh, we all think we need to raise rates. And fight. Don't forget, if they raise rates more, it's going to cause a banking crisis. That's what, do you think? Do you think if they raise rates more, remember, right? Just eight, nine weeks ago, we had three of the four largest banks in the history of the country go belly up. Emergency meetings over the weekend between Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell. They don't get together on Sundays unless it's a big, big deal. Now they're talking about raising rates even higher. And the reason why those banks went down was because rates were, had gone too high. The value of the bonds they hold had gone down. We've covered that ad nauseum. If rates go even higher, oh, it could be ugly. So today we're going to get the Fed minutes, meeting, minutes, meeting, whatever, whatever, however you want to say it, the, the, the notes from their meeting. Yeah, well, you know, I, and I want to go back to this briefly. Watch what the Fed does, not what they say. Isn't that true for life in general, right? Like, you know, whether it's a spouse or a kid or a neighbor or whoever, watch what they do, not what they say. That's the important part. Need I remind you, recently the Fed paused, and every other time they've paused, they've wound up cutting rates after that. Enough of that. Friday. Big news, okay? This will be market-moving news for the silver price and gold price. Hello, Susie's house. Good to see you. That's beautiful Susie. Everybody, please say hi. And Coin Shop Chris, say hi to him as well. Uh, Victoria Hunt, welcome. Ellen Rose Peach, we love that name. And Judith Bison, good to see you. Bison, sorry, I probably... Steve Mann, good to see you, Steve. Welcome to the basement. Welcome to all of you. Friday, big day. Big BS day. As a matter of fact, big BLS day. You know, the Bureau of Lies and Statistics, also known as the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Friday morning, they're going to release the June employment report, the June jobs numbers. Now, I don't know who they have uh, calculating the numbers because, as I've said uh, in the previous uh, months, 
my daughter's uh, fifth grade class was there some government people would show up with a bunch of paper and ask them to add up some numbers for them. So now that it's summertime, I don't know who they have uh, doing the numbers for them. But let's look, all joking aside, these numbers are always suspect. I didn't make up the Bureau of Lies and Statistics. I've heard that said many times by many, many smart people. The reality is the 12 of the last 13 employment reports have been miraculously great. Though, look, it's, a, it's an economic miracle being pulled off by our fearless president, Joe Biden. But what happens to the silver price and gold price? When these great employment numbers come up, it's so great out there, isn't it? Don't you feel great living in America right now? There's so much opportunity. You get to be part of a middle class that is being shrunk and beaten and abused. But there's so many jobs. Hey, if you're having a hard time, let me tell you what you do. You go get yourself a second job. And then if you can't make it, you know what you do? Go get yourself a third job. That way, the Bureau of labor and statistics can count that second and third jobs as another job. It's the land of opportunity. I've not heard of a lot of people getting fourth jobs, but it wouldn't surprise me. Nonetheless, these reports come out. The numbers are unbelievable. Oh, we created 333,000 jobs. It's incredible, right? That means the Fed can say, oh, the economy's strong, employment's good, we can be hawkish because we're supposedly fighting inflation, which is also a bunch of BS because mathematically, the only way the Fed or the United States government has any chance of ever paying the debt off, $32 trillion and counting, and now with an unlimited no debt ceiling, they can spend as much as they want, the only way they can pay that off is to inflate it away. So the Fed's not really wanting to fight inflation, but that's a whole different story. Because when these numbers come out, all the sheeple, the sheep investors say, oh, employment's good. The Fed's going to be hawkish, blah, blah. It's all a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It's a monetary mirage, okay? But be prepared because Friday... If it happens again, and maybe I'm wrong, I'm often wrong, but, you know, like 12 out of the last 13, from what I've heard, have been beats. And I know have been, I felt it every time because I take this seriously. Do you take it seriously? Your investments, your holdings of silver and gold? I take it seriously. Do you take it seriously? And every time these numbers come out, they're great. All these new jobs, all this opportunity. The price of silver and gold get hammered. So Friday... Yeah, we could see, right? We could we could be sitting by Friday. Well, what is today? Wednesday. Yeah, by Friday we could be sitting with gold fifty dollars lower. We could be we could. I don't. I'm I'm not saying we are. We could be fighting for twenty one dollar silver. I hope that's not the case. I hope that I'm wrong, and I'm not saying that I believe that will be the case. But I believe we need to be prepared because our old friend here, right? You know, I need to get a little mirror in there for him he's got this unicorn and his well anyway um right he's gonna be he's like the wizard of oz right in the in the in the wizard of oz is yet to be completely exposed however we're gonna have great numbers now here's something really interesting about these great employment numbers that come out every month after they announce these great employment numbers Lately, they've also been revising the previous month numbers. They'll say, oh, in June, we created 300,000 jobs. The market only expected that we'd create 200, but we created 300,000 jobs. Oh, by the way, last month when we said we created 250,000 jobs, that number was wrong. Don't tell anybody, but we're going to revise that down by about 70,000 jobs. They've been doing that over and over. It's all a bunch of BS, right? We know that. But Friday, be prepared, guys. Be prepared. Look, the long-term thesis for silver and gold absolutely remains intact. We're going to be okay. But we're fighting a pretty uh, formidable opponent. Does it feel like Jerome Powell's formidable? 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 Formidable. Formidable. I can't say war. I can't say war. I don't know. I can't say anything right. What's the other thing I used to say? Susie will remember. Regardless. I used to say irregardless. 
but it's regardless. Nonetheless, Jerome Powell is a formidable opponent, okay? I'm going to be here with you through it all. I want to tell you, I'm going to be away for a while. I've got some other obligations I need to attend to, okay? I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to check in. I will get a new video out every day because I promise that to you. Don't forget, please subscribe. Please give this a thumbs up. I will put out a quality piece of content regarding silver and gold every day. Live streams are going to be a little dicey because of a commitment I have. I'll bring you more up speed on that uh, probably in the coming days. But I just wanted to let you know <clears throat> my my daily-ish live stream probably won't be here. Wow, Sharon, super chat. Thank you. That is very nice. I really appreciate that. Susie appreciates it. We all appreciate it. It helps support the channel and helps us continue to put out the content. I don't have a major sponsor right now that should be coming back online sometime in September, so the Super Chat is definitely helpful. The other big news today, guys, China, their economy appears to be slowing down. PMI numbers out of China don't look good. Europe, the same thing. PMI numbers don't look good. Purchase Managers Index, that means... The purchase managers aren't buying as much stuff. Things are starting to slow down. I'm going to hop over to the chat. And Sharon, thank you again. Wow, that was really, really awesome. Really awesome. Hop in the shower. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the other thing. Just so you guys know, Susie, my wonderful wife, when I'm in the morning, I try to shower before I come on so I'm fresh and clean for you. And I'll say, I'm going to go hop in the shower. She's like, you're not going to hop into the shower. <laughs> Susie and I have a lot of fun bantering back and forth. She's actually, I think, more liked on the channel than I am. And Coin Shop Chris and her are tied neck and neck. But you got to deal with me. Marshmaz, good to see you. Calvin Cooper, Gerald Draper, Judith Bisson, Victoria Hunt. Don't forget our good friend, Buddy Rumble, the Louisiana gold guru who called the current price. Do we listen to the guru? He's got a crystal ball, guys, with real gold in it, okay? Do we listen to what he says? He called $1,900 gold, right? He called the silver price on the nail, okay? He's saying silver by January, excuse me, $30. There's some good news for you, huh? Hello, Jerry. Hello, Annie Oakley. You guys are awesome. Man, and from all over the world, right? We're getting together. Do we love to talk about silver and gold? Let me ask you, this, this is a dumb question on my behalf, but in the chat, tell me, do, do, you, do you enjoy talking about silver and gold? Yes, Fast Landing talks about Buddy Rumble has a crystal ball. The other announcement I want to make is the the guys at the Silver Degen Club. We got to take them seriously. These are super smart guys, okay? They're having a big Twitter event. I'm not going to be able to make it because of these other obligations, but it's tomorrow. I put a link to it in the community tab on Ron's basement on the YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel and find the community tab, there's a link to the Silver Degen Club's big Twitter event tomorrow where they're really kicking off uh, and providing a ton of information about the Silver Squeeze 2.0. It's very exciting. Make sure that you check that out. Yes, thank you. Hello, Jack Swanson from Calgary. <laughs> Hello, Gerald Draper. You guys are awesome. Andy Andy, and I really like that method. I appreciate it. It will take months for me to save for one ounce of gold, but I think it's going to be worth it. I thought about a quarter ounce or a half ounce, but those premiums are high. That's very smart. You know, guys, um, uh, let me say this about the Silver Squeeze 2.0 movement is to purchase 2023 American Silver Eagles. Yes, they have a high premium but it's to force the mint to provide the amount of silver that's being demanded by the public, right? To force them into a situation where they have to address why they aren't producing enough American silver eagles. And, you know, they buy the silver from the COMEX or however they acquire it, and then they ship it off to get it made into planchettes. There's no reason 
And I think that's the theory behind it as to why um, why they, they aren't able and why they aren't acquiring the silver that's necessary to make the American Silver Eagles. All right, guys, does it make you mad when you hear about scams in the gold and silver community? Whether it's somebody on eBay selling this, right? Look at this. Let me show you this beautiful Morgan. Let me show you this. Do you want this? That's a Morgan silver dollar. What year is it from? 1892. Isn't it beautiful? Look what happens when you stick a magnet on it. A magnet sticks to it. That's one of the simpler tests you can do to see if the silver you have is fake. Okay, get these little magnets. I bought these. I think you can buy them on eBay. They're little tiny, super strong magnets. Okay, if a magnet sticks to something that you've bought that somebody says is silver, it's not silver. Coin Shop Chris can, I believe, confirm that for me, but a magnet will not stick to silver. So doesn't it make you mad, right? When you've got the situation, we're gonna talk about a big scam briefly, but when there's the massive scam to scam people who are buying gold, buying silver, right? Um, we had this situation not too long ago, right? Uh, Regal Assets, the guy, his name's Tyler Gallagher. Regal Assets was one of these companies that was advertising. They even had like an, a, a partnership or they were endorsed by Laura Ingraham, who I think is a Fox News um, a reporter. And now the guy that started the company, Tyler Gallagher, who they say like his driver, he hit, hit his own personal driver. This guy embezzled everybody's money. And the guy that was like driving him around for the last five years said he was drunk all the time and eating like psychedelic mushrooms. Um, and now he's disappeared. A lot of people think that he's in Dubai. That's not the latest one because there's a new one. This one is called uh, Higgins. Let me read this to you briefly. Uh, this is from MSN. An empty vault silver dealer ordered to pay $146 million in the case of 500,000 missing coins. Guys, be careful who you deal with, okay? It says, uh, when investigators went into the vault, where Robert Higgins claimed he kept a half million of his cu customers' silver coins. All they say they found were empty boxes filled with IOUs. People thought that this guy was buying silver coins for them. When the FTC, uh, FTC showed up, uh, it was a different story. I'm sorry, not the FTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Uh, they say that the empty vault was the result of a complex coin leasing scam, which Higgins claimed he was buying and storing American Eagle coins, but pocketed tens of millions of dollars of investors' money instead. According to court filings, the scam dated back to 2014 and continued through 2022 during which more than 200 investors, I hope that does not include you, were allegedly defrauded out of $113 million in money they'd given Higgins purportedly to buy silver coins. So this guy was taking people's money and had some pro leasing program called Maximus. I don't know. He wasn't really buying the coins. It'd be like me saying, hey, um, Ron's Basement Silver Company, right? Send me your money. I'll buy Silver Eagles and we'll hold them here. They'll be safe, right? And you send me your money and then I don't buy Silver Eagles. Instead, I go out on an exotic vacation or buy a new car or go to fancy restaurants, okay? That's, hap that's happened. That's an exception. <laughs> Most of the companies aren't scammers, but you know, Coin Shop Chris brought this up. Actually, Coin Shop Chris, I can thank you. He broke this story to me. Thank you, Coin Shop Chris. And in his subject line, he wrote what he always likes to say. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. And guys, the more, how do you feel about it? The more I'm around uh, and, and really staying on top of what's going on 
uh, I don't know. It, 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 maybe the, uh, if you don't hold it, you don't own it is, uh, is uh, there, there's a lot more strength and truth than that. Let me, let me know in a bird in the hand, Gerald says, are you type one? If you're a person who, who really believes in the, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And I'll read your name. Okay. Because I'm becoming more of a, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Quench up, Chris. Hey, Neil, thank you for being here. <coughs> Neil is now a moderator. That's why there's a wrench. Thank you for doing that, Neil. Neil, the platinum guru. And DJ, yes, fast landing. Hello, Cheryl, T123, Casey Jones, Ancient Tom, Annie Oakley, Michael H. Gregory Green says negative 100. Joanne Diaz won. Royal Rich. David F. Victoria Hunt won. Hunter dropped at Andrew McElvin. Low blood pressure says PSLV is a scam. That's interesting. BCC. LIX. Ellen Rose Peach. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Mark Carroll. Ellen Rose Peach won. Thomas Toops. Mark McCollin. Frodo. Ronald Rocamore, good first name, Ronald, Daniel, Miranda, Nasir, Zaman, Gerald, Draper, one including Unicorn, Fart Dust, and Fiat, <laughs> Roger Yao, Ken McClure, Marshmaz, Calvin Cooper, Chill, 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 Ellen Rose, if you don't hold it, you can't enjoy the beauty, good point, Steve Shockley, Andy Nicole, that Unicorn, Fart Dust gets everywhere, Yes, it does. And that's what Coin Shop Chris always says. Gold and silver are real money. Everything else is just unicorn fart dust. And it really is. Think about it. Paper money. Think about, how about this? Recently, somebody in Kentucky in a cornfield found, I don't know, I forget now, 800 gold coins. So imagine, imagine you've got some land. Imagine you have some land, and um, it, it's been in your family for generations upon generations, okay? So your great-great-great-great-grandpa back in 1850 decided he was going to bury something of value on that land, okay? Option one, he buried a little metal box with some paper. Let's say it was here in the United States. <coughs> they would have been called greenbacks back then. That's option one. Option two... He buried the equivalent at the time amount of silver coins, okay? Fast forward 150 years later, you're, you're going through the field, you're plowing it up, and you hit something, you're like, what is that? If grand, great, great, great grandpa done option one, you'd be lucky if that paper even survived for 150 years. And if it did, it would have very little value. Probably would have some value, but very little value. If grandpa had buried the equivalent amount of silver coins in that field back then, guess what? You would have found yourself a little fortune. Hey, you know what? The real fortune for me is that you join me here in the basement. You guys are awesome. The community that we have here in Ron's basement, the comments, the interactions, the quality of the people is second to none. I really appreciate you, okay? I want you to come back to the basement. Oh, hey, wait a minute. We got a problem, guys. We only have 91 thumbs up. We don't stop till we get 100. 92. When we get to 100 thumbs up, we ring the bell. Can you do it? Hit that thumbs up, please. It's just a little goal we like to have. The 100 thumbs up means we're happy. 95, 100, 10 bells. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You take care of yourself, and I'm going to see you soon. Thank you.